From the campus studios of Saarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Ropecast. I am Roger Charlton. And I'm Peter Tischer. Welcome back, everyone. And hi, Roger. Hello. Yeah, we wanted to come back to this topic of academic lecture style. Yes, and humor. And humor. And actually, I would like to do a longer podcast on this because I think it's a very, very interesting and, of course, amusing topic. Right. For this reason, we had another look at lectures from Harvard, this course on computer science. And I would actually like to listen to something again, to another excerpt. Right? Is that okay with you, Roger? Of course, yeah. Okay. And what I would like us to listen to now is a presentation by Dr. Henry Leitner. This is about the Turing test, isn't it? Right. This is about the Turing test. The Turing test is a test for artificial intelligence. And Mr. Leitner, in his lecture, tries to explain how this test works. And let's listen to his definition of the test first. That's right. If you just go to Wikipedia or some other you know, place on the web, you'll find a very simple statement of the problem. In computing machinery intelligence, a human judge engages in a natural language conversation with one human and one machine, each of which try to appear human. If the judge cannot reliably tell which is which, then the machine is said to pass the test. In order to keep the test simple and universal, to explicitly test the linguistic capability of the machine, instead of its ability to render words into audio, the conversation is usually limited to, to text type. That was Dr. Leitner on the Turing test of artificial intelligence. Now, what's first interesting about this lecture is, of course, that Mr. Leitner uses a Wikipedia definition yeah. to you, make his point. Usually academics are really wary of using Wikipedia. Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? Uh, by the way, you can find the Wikipedia definition on our website at robcast.de. But this is not what I wanted to talk about today. The Turing test is kind of hard to understand, even with this Wikipedia definition. By the way, Roger, can you maybe phrase it more simply, what the Turing test is? I'll try. Named after Alan Turing, um, a British scientist, mm -hmm. who thought it would be interesting to see whether a computer could function in such a way as to, let's say, fool people into thinking it was a human being. Okay. This, after all, is what artificial intelligence is all about. So the computer program has to operate so skillfully that people using the program think they're dealing with a human being, not a machine. And the Turing test, if I got that correctly, does not test humans. No, it tests... It tests the machine... It tests the software, basically. ...for its yeah. ability to be artificially intelligent to fool people. Is yeah, that... that's right. Right. And how yeah. does it do that? Well, to rule out the whole business of voice um, simulation and so on, they, everything has to be entered via a keyboard. So you're dealing with a type. Mm -hmm. And basically, the program should be able to respond to anything that is entered via the keyboard in such a way that the person sitting at the keyboard thinks he or she is dealing with another human being. Okay, so this is the Turing test. Now still, folks, this is kind of complicated to understand. And of course, in his lecture, Dr. Leitner knows this. And he uses humor to make his point. Now what Dr. Leitner does is he brings in another concept or phenomenon, which is amusing in itself, which is called the ELISA or doctor program. You ever heard of that? Oh, yeah, that's the one that kind of, um, it acts as if it's a kind of session with a psychotherapist, isn't it? Right, which brings us back to our artificial intelligence program. Yeah. And the way this program works is it just takes little bits of what a user enters, yeah. it just takes individual words, and sort of transforms them into general questions. For example, if you type in, uh, my mother hates me, <laughs> then it'll just pick up on the word mother, yeah. and it'll just say, well, tell me more about your mother. Yeah. Or maybe, who else hates you? Or who else hates you, that's, <laughs> that sort of thing. Yeah. Of course, it did, never understood anything about what the user typed, but it's acting as if. Yeah. Or if somebody says, I have a problem with my car, yeah. 
it may not understand anything, the ELISA program, and it'll say, why do you say that? Yes. So the computer will say, why do you say that? And then you say, or you type in, well, I start to tremble every time I drive. And the computer maybe will not understand anything, but it'll say, tell me more about this. Yeah. And that's the way the ELISA program imitates a psychotherapy. It's almost a parody of a psychotherapist, right? Yeah. yeah. And the one thing I wanted to listen to now is an anecdote that Dr. Leitner tells or relates in his lecture where he brings these two concepts together. So the ELISA program on yeah. the one hand. And the Turing test. And the Turing test on the other hand in a little anecdote. And this anecdote basically explains both concepts, yes. both ideas. And this is something I would like us to listen to now. Right. So, let me just end with the following uh, anecdote, which is actually true. Some time ago, at a company in Cambridge called Bolper, Renick & Newman, a version of Weizenbaum's ELISA psychotherapist program might have inadvertently passed the Turing test of intelligence. And it goes as follows. There was an account written in uh, the communications of the ACM SIGART newsletter in which the following incident apparently happened. One Saturday morning at about 9 a.m., a BBN vice president in charge of selling our telecom commercial service arrived at our PDP-1 computer room hoping to be able to use the computer for a demo. He found a note on the PDP-1 teletype that read, please type all messages into this teletype and end them with a period. This note had been left there by one of the programming bums who had just succeeded in making run a Lisp version of the doctor program based on Eliza as developed by Weizenbaum. However, the vice president thought this note indicated that the teletype was actually linked with the one in my home since I often used the computer all night long. Therefore, he started typing to, quote unquote, me, but in fact was typing to this version of the doctor program. The following conversation ensued. <laughs> vice president, do you think that I can use the computer this morning? Teletype, why do you ask? Vice president, I might be able to make some additional telecom sales. Teletype. Why aren't you sure? Vice President, well, my prospective customers have never seen a demonstration of the system. Teletype, does this mean very much to you? <laughs> Vice President, of course it does. Teletype, you seem very positive about that. <laughs> Vice President, this is ridiculous. Teletype, what do you mean this is ridiculous? <laughs> Vice President, is there any reason why I can't use the computer now? Teletype. Please tell me more about your prospective customers. Like, please tell me more about your family. <laughs> Vice President, please dial me up right now on 491-1850. So now the, uh, the author interrupts. He says, note that after the last remark, the, the Vice President did not obey the instructions, left out the period, and therefore the computer didn't answer him. This so infuriated the Vice President, who thought I was playing games with him, he called me up, woke me up from a deep sleep, and said, Vice President, why are you being so snotty to me? Bob Rao, what do you mean, why am I being so snotty to you? <laughs> Oh, isn't that funny? Yeah, that was really well done. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think it really does bring home the message that is, the listeners begin to understand what the Turing test is uh -huh. and how this piece of equipment or this program actually passed the test. Yeah, and, and, and really fooled the vice president. But it, I mean, it's, it's presented in such a fun way. Yeah. And at the same time, it's a rather serious, a rather complicated idea to get across. But it works. It does, yeah. And when you think the technology is now completely outdated, I mean, these teletype machines right, for right. <laughs> conveying messages from building to building. Right. And, uh, but but what, what, what is important to me is that in an American lecture, or a British one for that matter, you do not need to be ashamed or of, of presenting a very serious topic this way. No. Find the right anecdote, huh? Right, you have to find the right anecdote. I and mean, apparently Dr. Leitner is good at that. Yes. Um, and by the way, uh, I have to thank him here because I sent him an email and asked him whether we could use his material. Right. So uh, thank you to Harvard.
And thank you to our dear listeners for listening to this episode of Ropecast. If you want to find the text of the anecdote you just heard or additional information on the Turing test, well, just go to our website at www.ropecast.de. And if you want to know more about the English language, things we have not talked about yet, well, just leave us a message. You're always welcome to do so. Bye for today. I'm Peter Tischer. Bye too from Roger Charlton. You've been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial. <laughs>